And in the next, next example, going to students two, No, not really. Okay, so in this example, let's look at dot h first. So now, uh, this is the same. It's inheriting from NS object. We have changed this. We're no longer saying int age and, int and a string name. We're saying underscore age and underscore name. And that is a convention that in the past, it used to just be a convention, and now it's a convention that actually means something. So you're going to want to pretty much always have these instance variables be underscored. Uh, and now here we're getting to these strange looking method things. So let's actually go back to slides for a second. Uh, we'll see in a second uh, why we want the underscores. I haven't quite, quite gotten there yet. Okay, so instance variables, we saw we know them at protected, at private, at public. And it's somewhat messy, but like when I said at public, everything beneath the at public would be public. But then if I switch to, like if I had at public int x, then at private int y, y would be private because it's underneath the private. Okay, uh, so first let's look at this. So messages. In other object oriented languages, you don't really, well, some you do, but. Java, you don't. Uh, so messages are going to be the way that we invoke methods on objects and classes. So here, this square bracket syntax is what you're going to be using to send messages. And here we're saying the student class has a method called alloc. And so send to the student class that, that method, invoke that method. And then that is supposed to return a student star. And so this alloc is going to be pretty much everywhere. You, whenever you need to allocate an object, you need to do some sort of alloc. Sometimes there's like alloc, sometimes there are some other alloc type functions you might be using, but you're almost always going to be allocing these things. So here, so there are two different types of methods like there are in other object-oriented languages. So we have instance methods and class methods. And so the way we're going to differentiate between those is all the way on the left side, you see we have this minus sign. So if we have a minus sign, that means the method is going to be an instance method. And if we have a plus sign, that means that it's going to be a class method. And an instance method is something that you actually need an object to use the method. And a class method is something where you don't need an object to use the method. So going back to here, the fact that we're calling alloc on the student class tells us that alloc is a class method because we don't actually need a student to allocate a student. That'd be pretty flawed if we couldn't actually get a student without having a student. So the plus sign is like a static method? Yes. So uh, yeah, the static keyword from Java is the equivalent of plus. Uh, so the syntax for these things. Uh, we see all the way on the left is going to go plus or minus, always. And then we're going to have the return type of the method. So here we have void, int, void. And then after the return type, we have the name of the method. And so we have the name init and we have the name age. And then technically the name of the last method is going to be set age colon. Uh, we'll see why. Uh, but the this here, this age is what we're just going to call that variable, and this is the type of that variable. So this method isn't going to return anything. It's called set age colon, and we would pass it some integer. So sending those messages, we see that student, we're using lowercase student, so this student over here, this student object. Since these are instance methods, we need to send these messages to objects. So we send the init message to student, 
we send the age message to student, and then we send set age with the parameter 20, with the argument 20. Questions? What do you mean? Yes, that is how you should call it. Could you call it as what? How would you call it in C? Oh, er, uh, so no. This, this is why the previous example was something that was bad. You, sh you should very rarely be dereferencing objects. I almost want to say never dereference objects. And so the arrow operator is an implicit dereference. And so init is also somewhat different from setting the fields of the object. Uh, and another reason why the previous example was bad. You, always, you never want to deal with an object that was allocated but not initialized. So even though the student object, and we'll see in the next example how, how I originally just had like student alloc, and then I did Alice arrow age. I shouldn't have done that. I should have done student alloc init. So always initialize your objects. And then I could access those fields. But then on top of that, I shouldn't be accessing those fields using arrows. I should be sending messages. So we'll see that in the next example, the right way of doing that. And then we'll see that there are like 10 newer right ways of doing it. So selectors, pretty much an alternative name for method. So alloc init age and set age colon. Remember, the colon is part of the name. Once we see multiple argument functions, we'll see that there will be multiple colons in the name. Uh, so all of those are just selectors, and we'll see why that's relevant later. And let's look at that example now. Student two, okay. So here we have said in underscore age and underscore name, and now we have four methods, and this is like the getters and setters of Java that you might be used to. Uh, we have two methods, one called age and another called set age. That uh, the first one is going to get the age of the thing, and the second one we're going to use to set the age. And similarly down here, we have name and set name. The first we're going to use to retrieve the name, and the second we're going to use to set the name. And these are important names, both by convention and we'll see things that help us later, where in other languages you might say like get name and set name. Here the convention is just to say name. Do not say get name. Questions? OK. So. Looking at the implementation, we must be implementing these four methods. And so notice they are all instance methods. They are all minus. And age, we're just going to return underscore age. Set age, we're going to set underscore age. So we're going to set our instance variable age to the passed in argument age. Uh, we're going to return underscore name, and we're going to set, well, this one's somewhat interesting. So we're going to set our instance variable underscore name to name copy. So we know that this syntax is how we're going to send messages to objects. Name is an NS string object. And so apparently, and you can look in the, you can look in the documentation to verify this, apparently name ha or NS string has an instance method called copy that is going to return a copy of this NS string. And why do you think we want a copy of the NS string instead of just saying underscore name equals name? Yeah. Yeah, so it isn't. Well, actually, so if we did not make a copy of the name, 
it isn't a threat that we are going to modify that NS string since we don't have any methods for modifying that NS string. I guess we, if we went around the proper method protocol, we would be doing things. We'll see why we should never be modifying name. But it's possible that the NS string that was passed to us at Bob or something is that that could later be changed. And so if that is changed, then if we just do this, then we are also going to, the name within this object will have been changed. So we want to copy Bob for ourselves in case if Bob is ever changed, we don't want to be changed. <coughs> okay. So looking at main.m, now this is the better way of doing this. This is like appropriate objective C. We're going to see there are more and more better ways, but this is at least like not bad. Uh, so we are appropriately in knitting. And notice that we are allowed to like nest these things. So we could, if we wanted, do uh, student alloc and then Alice equals Alice init. But we are allowed to nest these calls. OK. And now we are, instead of directly doing Alice arrow age equals 20, which is bad, we are saying Alice set age to 20. We are sending the message set age with the argument 20 to Alice. And we're setting the name to Alice. And similarly with Bob. And then what Greet's going to do is use this s name and s age. We're going to send those getter methods to get getter messages to get the appropriate instance variables. Yeah? Oh, so the only reason we can do that here is because student alloc happens to return the student object. And so we are then using that student object and initting it. And that also returns the initialized student object. Set age doesn't return the student object. If we, we could actually do that, we could do like, instead of void, we could have it return the student object. And then this is going to get into return self. Self is going to be our keyword here. We'll see it later. So here, are you saying, why should we need? So this is the, you never pass by. You never pass objects by value. You never handle objects as explicit values. You're always going to go through a pointer to the object, which is why I say, pretty, think of like NS string star as the object, not a pointer to the object. Think of it as the object. Except that if you modify it, then it's going to be modified because it's a reference. <laughs> OK, so now we're returning self, which is going to allow us to do that nested. Now we're free to do Alice set age 20, set name Alice. We, not yet. The next example we'll be able to. Uh, just to point out one other thing that you might see in like documentation or like examples online or stuff. So alloc init is such an incredibly common thing. Like you alloc init. You might be doing some different initializer. You there are different initializers, but using alloc and init is so common that there's actually a shortcut. new. And so new is going to sort of, or well, new is going to first alloc allocate and then initialize. So that does it in one step. Uh, there are sort of, well, this is the first of three religious wars you'll hear today about Objective-C, that there are a lot of people who say new is a perfectly fine thing. And there are a lot of people who say you should absolutely never use new. So we don't care which you 